some of us struggle with being overweight. Others of us struggle with being ugly. Some of us even struggle with depression and trying to put our whole life together. Some of us are just foreigners in a new country. There's a lot of ways to be unbeautiful. I think we all can relate to feeling unloved, unbeautiful, unworthy, unrelatable. And I think all these stories are going to provide a unique perspective but a perspective that we can all understand. Thank you to I Am Unbeautiful for providing these stories. The link will be in the description. We're going to start off with Danny. I don't want to be here anymore. This is not who I want to be for the rest of my life. So I feel like either I become beautiful or I just die. That's pretty much my only two escape routes. And I don't know which is going to come first. I was thin as a child growing up, so I didn't really hear um, a lot of teasing coming from family and friends. Uh, I reached a certain age where puberty kicked in. I started getting uh, bigger than my mother would have liked. So then from there, it just became a lot of the bullying and hearing that I couldn't have my sister's hand-me-downs because I was so big, I was gonna rip through them, or uh, kids in school kind of moving over as I walked through desk because they would say that I would just shove everybody out the way. As you can see, the hate that she has for herself goes all the way into her adulthood. You know, I can obviously speak from experience being overweight and obese, and I've wanted to get weight loss surgery just to make the pain go away or make myself feel better. Um, and we do take these drastic measures when we can't find a way out, especially if we can't do it through working out or eating less because we may have an addiction that we just can't get over. And we know that our lives is just so bad and so miserable. We don't know another way out. As she's going through all this in her childhood, though, it does start to affect how she feels about herself as a woman and also herself as being feminine, as you'll see. They would tell me that my figure made me look like a boy. And at some point, I feel like that really affected my acceptance of, you know, my feminine upbringing because I started feeling that because I was so ugly and unattractive and fat as a girl, maybe I could transition into a male. So around high school, that's exactly what I started doing. There's this big regret that comes with that because I did used to love to sing and I loved just talking with anybody but the testosterone kind of got my voice pretty deep so now people have even more so of a reason to say I'm a man or I sound like a man and the same kids who I went to school with saw all of this going down and would tell me like there's I mean you're still going to be unattractive and fat as a guy so I don't exactly know what your plan was. A lot of the things I did to please people just kind of backfired on me. There's a lot of remorse that comes with that. To this day, it's just like, I didn't bother anybody. I didn't do anything for anybody to hurt me the way they have. But I guess being ugly just kind of gives them a pass because I guess that I don't have any feelings. I started feeling, well, if I'm so ugly and, you know, all that as a female, then I can become a guy. And there was like this weird thought in my head where I thought people would love me more if I became male. Sometimes we want these stories to have a happy ending. We want these stories to be like, oh, I feel much better about myself. Now, Danny does go on to transition back into the female, but she does find out that she most likely will not be able to have kids. And that's the regret that she says she has. These stories aren't supposed to be glamorous. These stories aren't supposed to be yay is me. Life is great. Sometimes people just need to be heard. The next story we're going to hear is Kate. Oh, I've had this just uh, for most of my life. I mean, let's see. I guess even when I was a kid, um, 
Yeah, my mother often told me I was ugly and that I was a big stupid pig. Uh, my mother uh, was pretty demanding and said uh, many uh, mean things to me because she um, she really wanted me to be the best and she wanted the best for me. She wanted me to improve, although like oftentimes it just made me feel really bad. And I mean, I really was desperate to please her when I was a kid. I find was also always afraid of um, being fat, so I also have struggled with um, some eating disorders. And well, I guess in general, people don't seem to like the way I look. Although usually people just ignore me. So, um, well, I mean, if I were good looking, then I would be getting a lot more attention. So that um, confirms that I'm bad looking. I'm sure you guys recognize Kate from Cheap Skates, which was filmed back in 2012, but people have been making reaction videos for it in the last couple of years. But I want y'all to see the recurring theme here. In childhood is where a lot of these adults are having problems, including myself and maybe even you. It seems like we have a hard time getting over our childhood. And that's why it's very important to talk these things out. And that's why I think these stories are so beautiful because it just shows the way that her mother treated her, calling her a stupid pig. You can see how she still feels that today. Even when she gets around people, people still make fun of her. And they also make fun of her how she was on cheapskates. But um, I wasn't expecting people to be talking about how um, disgusting I look and and yeah, people were, yeah, a lot of people say I, I'm disgusting and nasty. And then some people said, oh, I hate the way her mouth moves when she talks. And I mean, I'm not sure what, like, do I look that bad? <laughs> and, and people also said, oh, I hate her face. Oh, okay, so I have a bad looking face, I guess. And oh, there are also comments about how um, I will be forever single and um, no man would ever want me. So basically I've, um, yeah, unfortunately there's confirmation that I look bad. She later goes on to say she would feel more beautiful if men gave her more attention or if men told her she was beautiful, but she knows that she's ugly because most men don't do this for her. As you heard, people had called her ugly in the show. They had said that she's really weird. She's really nasty. And the show did kind of push some things a little too far, saying that she eats out of the trash can and stuff like that. It was a pretty crazy episode. That is just one of the things that comes with being in the public eye. You're going to get nasty hate comments. I want to say this, though. It is just another reason for a lot of us to believe that we are unbeautiful. We are living a life that's not that great. But it's so funny, even people who are attractive and people get treated attractive still deal with these same kind of things, but not always coming from somebody else. Sometimes it's coming from ourselves. Um, so growing up, I dealt with depression and uh, bipolar. Uh, so I was diagnosed with having bipolar when I was 19. I was just always seen as like the rebellious kid in my family or like the one that was moody or would get angry quick, like quite quickly. Uh, depression was not something that we talked about, and I struggled with that a lot uh, growing up, uh, having suicidal thoughts. I probably attempted suicide twice, and my parents didn't know about it. And that was probably the biggest struggle, is that my parents didn't know about it. So I had to kind of deal with it on my own. It was hard for me to transition into somebody that was bullied all the time as a kid, being called a monkey, being called ugly, short, four eyes, all of these different things, and then kind of getting older and gaining attention for looking conventionally pretty. I, in my head, that translated as being like overly sexualized, and I've struggled with that a lot. In my mind, I never really understood comments that were, I guess, positive about my looks. I always felt dirty and over-sexualized and just not, I don't really know what the words are for it, really. just I just didn't feel like they fit me. And I felt wrong when I received any kind of positive comments. I internalized it and said that it was always all my fault. I think up until maybe a year ago, I always felt like it was my fault. 
sometimes these feelings can come from a parent. You know, we know the trope of when you come from a different country, you get told you need to be a doctor. You need to be an accountant. You need to go get married. You need to go live a happy life, which is what she's going through. So it's not always something that's coming from the outside world. Yes, there is bullying in childhood, but it's a whole different story. Sometimes when you are getting bullied, you come home to tell your parents, hey, I'm being bullied. And your parents don't really either care or. Or they tell you not to focus on that. Your focus needs to be on getting good grades. And they look past any feelings you're going through. Whether that be depression. Whether that be going through manic episodes. They don't care at all. And a lot of people in my culture, um, I guess, recognize that behind closed doors. But it's not passed down to us kids where we feel comfortable enough to talk to our parents. Like about things like, hey, my self-esteem is not really that great. Hey, I'm thinking about suicide because kids are making fun of me in school. Things like that weren't talked about. And so things like that end up being internalized and then come out in ways that I never expected. I think what's important for me is to speak to somebody in my position that can't talk to their parents about it and just kind of give them this like glimmer of hope that it's normal and you're okay and things are going to be okay. And if you're not okay, then that's also okay. There are ways to help yourself. Being bipolar is definitely probably the biggest challenge that I've had to deal with in my life. So there are two kind of spectrums to it. So there's extreme depression for me, um, and then there's extreme mania. When I'm in kind of that manic form or the side of my mood, it feels amazing. <laughs> I, there's nothing that feels better. I feel like I can jump off of a building and nothing will happen to me. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing will happen to me. The depression side of bipolar has been a very long, very difficult struggle for me. I mean, there were days where I just didn't get out of bed, clean my room for like four or five months, maybe. I couldn't go to class when I was in college. Um, there was a lot of anxiety attached to it. One time when I was manic, I was convinced I didn't need school. I thought I knew everything there is to know about anything, and I quit. Uh, thankfully, though, the procedure at my school was that if you had walked into registrar's office and drastically said, I want to drop all my classes, they would immediately send you to counseling. And the psychologist was like, no, this is absolutely a manic episode. We need to just calm you down, and if you don't, then we're going to send you to the hospital. I started going to therapy and that definitely helped sort out a lot of those feelings and not put the blame on me, but kind of accept that these are things that have happened to me, but these are not things that define me. I think sometimes we are so quick to be like, oh, it was my childhood. Oh, something's going on. And even when we do feel like these bouts of joy, just like she said, she was going through a manic episode. I think even myself, and I want to talk a little bit from my experience, when I was using drugs, I felt like I was unstoppable. I felt like I was on top of the world and I just kept myself in this state and I never wanted to come down. When I stop using drugs, I don't feel that feeling ever. I never feel joy. I never feel like happy. Now, do I laugh at stuff? Yes. I Do I find things funny? Of course. But to say that I have a prolonged feeling of happiness, which I understand happiness is not something that can be sustained, but it's very rare. I, I find it very hard for me to be able to just sit around and be joyful. I normally have to get myself to do something. You know, that's when I have to go work out or I have to make videos or something like that. I have to get my mind busy enough for it not to feel depressed. Because if I was just sitting here minding my business, not making videos, I get depressed very fast, and that's a lot from the drug use. And I went and talked to people about this uh, to make sure it wasn't just me. You know, maybe my life is just that bad. I think sometimes you got to realize our brain can play tricks on us. Our brain may be damaged. There may be something actually going on. So before you're so quick to be like, oh, my life is just awful, maybe sometimes that's just a feeling that is trickling through your brain so often. There may be something going on. I would always highly suggest talking to somebody, especially if you're in my case, if you drugs in the past, just go find a community where you can actually express these things and maybe see if it's not just you being a what they call Debbie Downer or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and move on to another story about how sometimes coming from a different area can put you in a bad mood. 
But I definitely think my standards of beauty are, you know, being affected by these very fixed, rigid ideals, especially with like, I guess, like as a foreigner trying to assimilate into this white culture and trying to fit in. Um, I'm a Taiwanese native, so I was born in Taiwan, um, but I moved to Latin America when I was five. So I've spent 15 years of my life in Latin America. As it's, you know, as, as a parent now, I'm an alien. I'm not from here. So trying to figure out how to balance, you know, my performance career with living in New York City as an alien. Something that I'm working on. I mean, it was in college where I found concert dance. And it was one of those, wow, so I found this art and I really want to do it. What does this mean? You know, I was like on route to becoming a psychologist. <laughs> and then so I auditioned for the program in New York called the Paradance Certificate Program. I am currently in what they call OPT, which is just, you know, I get a year where I get to work in my field of study legally, which is dance. I think what would make me feel beautiful is just a, a calm awareness that I'm doing okay, that I'm doing enough. And I think then when it's more of a focus of what I can do instead, instead of all these things that are, that have happened to me or that I can't do or that I need to get rid of, blah, blah, blah. So focusing on the things that I do have and the art that I am making, it's a lot easier to feel confident. Yeah, as you, and just to be present in everything that I am doing. And I think that in turn gives me the feeling that I am beautiful without having to look in a mirror to verify that. And I think that's what beauty must come down to for a lot of us. Okay. I understand that being beautiful is an actual trait, you know, a way a person looks does make them beautiful compared to another person. But I think what we need to do is not focus on just our looks to feel not that we're beautiful, but to feel like we're worthy. I think when people think about being beautiful, they really get it mixed up with being unworthy. Just because you're not uh, eight or nine or 10, I know that's always the big thing today is where do you rate somebody? But just because you're not eight, nine or 10 doesn't mean you're not worthy. You may not be conventionally attractive. You may not be the right size. You may not be big enough. You may not be skinny enough. You may not be smart enough. You not might you might not be from the right country according to some people. That doesn't mean you're unworthy. Your worth is always important. Do your best to take care of yourself. Do your best to take care of your mental health. Take care of your actual health and your physical health, your emotional health, and keep trying to move forward. I think we all go through feeling unworthy at some point in our lives. That is just one of the hardest things about being a human, trying to figure out where are we supposed to go? Where's our meaning in life? And are we worth even living at all? And I think that's just so hard to do. But I think as we continue to move throughout this life, we find friends, we find hobbies, and we find things that we love. And I think that is what starts to give us a sense of worth is when we start feeling like we can make a difference in somebody else's lives because we see how people make a difference in our lives. And if you're a parent, obviously you make a difference in your kids' lives or you make a difference in your sister's life, your brother's life, your mother, your father, or any other family member or just a friend because I know not everybody grows up with the family. But just realize how worthy you are to live this life even if you don't hit these standards you believe that you're supposed to be this athletic or you're supposed to be this beautiful or all that stuff that's external, some things you can't control. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'm out of here. Goodbye.